Welcome to Drive the DAF. Clear, structured explanation of the daily DAF in 20 minutes. You can even follow in the car. Sechus Tainis DAF Yud Vez discusses many halachos of fast days. Begins with a conclusion of the discussion of is there such a thing as a fast for part of a day? Does that count as a fast? The Gemara will get into when you are Makabel Tainus, when you accept that you should be fasting, what happens if your Kabbalah uh, encounters a Yom Tov that you're not supposed to fast on, when are you allowed to stop eating, when you have to stop eating, when are you allowed to continue eating, different types of fast days, uh, when you wear shoes on a fast day, when you don't wear shoes on a fast day. Then we'll get to a Mishnah which will discuss the next steps in the year When there is no rain, what additional steps were taken if the original fast did not produce rain? And the Gemara will continue afterwards as to what happened further. So the Gemara begins. Rav Chizda says, we've been discussing a fast for part of the day. So Rav Chizda says, a fast for part of the day only counts as fasting if you then finish off fasting to the rest of the day. So the Gemara says, that's not called fast for part of the day. That's called a fast for the whole day. So the Gemara means that what we mean to say was that you didn't eat the whole day, but not because you intended to fast. So it works in reverse. Somebody didn't eat part of the day by coincidence because he didn't get around to eating, and then he decides he wants to fast the rest of the day. So he only has a real fast for part of the day. He didn't fast the whole day. The first part of the day he just didn't eat by accident. So it says, Rizda, that'll be a case where part of the day fast counts as a fast. He could fast the rest of the day, and that, even though he was only cobbled to fast for part of the day, that counts as fasting because he didn't eat the whole day. But if somebody eats part of the day, then the rest of the day can't be considered fasting no matter what he was macabre upon himself too fast. Now, there's three questions on this. Three examples of where we see that part of a day fast does count as a fast. So, Mara's first question, uh, well, first is another re- repeat of Rav Chizda. He says this halach again. He says, any fast where the sun didn't set on the fast doesn't count as a fast. And now the Gemara gets to its three questions. First is from a Gemara later, which says that in the time of a fast day, the people who are doing the Avod and the Beis Amigdash, the Kahanam and the Levim, who are on shift, they didn't do a complete fast. They only fasted a bit, and they didn't finish the fast day. But still, the Bryce there calls it fasting. It says that they fasted for part of the day. So you see, a fast for part of the day is called a fast. The Gemara answers, and this will be the structure for most of these answers, the Gemara answers that they didn't actually fast at all. They just didn't eat as a expression of solidarity with the rest of the community that was fasting, but it wasn't really fast for them, and uh, they only expressed solidarity for part of the time. They had to eat for part of the time because they were doing the avoda, but it wasn't really a fast because you cannot have a fast for part of a day. Whereas next proof is a statement of Rabbi Eliezer ben Ratzadik, says, I'm from the family of uh, San'o, and this was one of the nine families that gave wood to the uh, fire in the Mizbeach at a time when it was very desperately needed, there was not enough wood, and therefore Chazal gave these nine families rights to bring one day a year for the rest of history. And that day was the Yomta for them. So he says, our day was on the 10th of Av, and it was a time when Tisha B'Av came in on the 10th of Av. Tisha B'Av itself, the 9th of Av was a Shabbos, and therefore the fast day was on the 10th of Av. And he says that we fasted, but we didn't finish the fast because it was the Yomta for us, we didn't want to finish the fast. So here you see the same thing. It's called fasting, even though it's only part of a day. The more answer is the same answer. They didn't have to fast at all because it was a yantef. They were just doing it out of solidarity. And um, therefore, it was okay that they only did it for part of the day. Whereas third question is Rabbi Yechanan. Uh, the Gemara says it's a incident that happened with Rabbi Yechanan. He would often, he would say that I'm going to fast from now until I get home. When we get home, we would eat. So you see there is a part of the day fast, and it's called a fast. Someone says that was different. He didn't want to have to go to an official state meal with the house of the Nasi. In order to avoid it, he would say, I'm fasting. All right. Gemara now moves on. The Gemara wants to know, when do you, are you supposed to be Mechabotinus? When should you accept upon yourself you're going to fast? As we've been seeing, it only counts as a fast if you've accepted officially that you're fasting. So Shmuel says, you got to fast. You have to accept that you're planning to fast before the day begins. Because the day has to begin with the acceptance already in place. Um, if you fast without accepting before the day begins, so Rabbi Barashila says, it counts as just empty air. It counts as if you're with the uh, device that the blacksmith used to use to blow air on the fire. You're just filled with air. You didn't eat because you didn't eat. It doesn't count as a fast day. Now, when should you exactly be Mechabal Tainus? So Rabbi says it should be Mincha time towards evening. 
towards the beginning of the fast. And Shmuel says, no, it should be in the tefillah of Mincha, specifically in the tefillah of Mincha. Rashi says, the end of Shemun Esrei, when we say, like, hi, that's when we add in that I plan to fast tomorrow, and I'm a Kabbalah upon myself a fast for tomorrow. So, um, says the Gemara, Shmuel is supported somewhat from a statement in Megillus Tainus. Megillus Tainus is a list of uh, quasi holidays on which are not allowed to fast. And over there it says as follows It says, Any man who already has a list of the fasts accepted upon himself, and they end up, one of them ends up being on this Yamtiv, so he should do Yesar. Yesar means he should prohibit himself. So prohibit himself means he should go ahead and accept the fast. Meaning the Megillah is telling us that you are allowed to fast on one of these holidays if you already accepted a tainus. But it says you have to go ahead and make the fast. It means you have to go and accept it. So go ahead and accept it means that's something you're supposed to do. So the Gemara says that would sound like it's something you're supposed to do during tefillah. Gemara doesn't explain why you would assume that that's during tefillah, but that's what Gemara says. And the Gemara says, no, it doesn't mean during tefillah. It just means he should accept it upon himself even not during tefillah. He should just not eat um, or accept upon himself to fast. It doesn't have to be tefillah related. Now, the Gemara has a similar machlokis as to what the exact wording of the Megillus Tainus is, similar to these two ways of understanding this phrase. One has the phrase Yesar, one has the phrase Ye Osar. Yesar means he should prohibit himself, Ye Osar means he is prohibited or he should be prohibited. So the Gemara discusses what do these two phrases mean. The Gemara says Yesar means, like we said, he should prohibit himself, he should be Makabal fast day. Eh? Ye Osar. So the Gemara goes to a brisa, which uses the word ye asar. So the Gemara says, uh, the brisa reads as follows. Uh, somebody who accepted upon himself a fast, a recurring fast. Let's say every Monday he said he's going to fast, or every Monday and Thursday. And then he finds out that one of those days is one of the holidays of Megillah Satinus. And it depends if the holiday was made before he was Makabal Tainus, or if he was Makabal Tainus before the holiday was made. And if the uh, he's Makabal these fasts before the holiday was made, then ye osar. Then he should be forbidden to eat. Okay, moving on, the Gemara brings a brisa. The Gemara says, when you're fasting, when does the fast begin? So we're referring to fasts which begin in the morning, not fasts which begin the evening before. So the brisa says, by Amud HaShachar, by sunrise, that is when the fast begins, according to the Tanakhama. Lazar Rebbe Shimon says, it's when the rooster crows. The rooster crows three times when the sun begins to rise. Rashi says this is referring to the first crow. Now, Abaye limits this, and Rava has a kasha on it. And according to a different version, Rava limited it, and Abai had a kasha on it. It was different limitations and different kashas. The first version runs as follows. Abai said, you're only allowed to eat till the morning if you didn't finish your meal yet. If you'll, as long as you kept your meal going the whole evening, then you're allowed to eat. Once you finish your meal the evening before, you have to stop eating. Now, Rava's kasha was, we have a brisa that says that if somebody got up from the meal, he's still allowed to eat. The Gemara says it's different. That's talking about where he got up from the meal, but he left the table there. Usually when you finish a meal, you take the table away. This guy got up, but he left the table behind, so that continues the meal, and therefore he's allowed to keep eating. Now, the second version goes as follows. Rava said that you're only allowed to eat till the morning if you didn't go to sleep. Once you went to sleep, then you have to start fasting once you wake up again. And on that, Abai asked, will we have a brisa that says that you're allowed to go to sleep and wake up and then eat again before the fast, before sunrise? So Gemara says that that's different. That's talking about where the guy uh, didn't really sleep. The guy was just kind of snoozing, kind of halfway asleep. We call him a name. So Gemara says, how do you define a name? What's that? Gemara says, that's somebody who's not asleep and not awake. Somewhere in the middle. If you call to him, he'll respond. If you ask him, if you remind him of something, he'll have enough brain power there to be able to say it. But to come up with an original thought that he wouldn't be able to do. Okay, now the Gemara wants to know about wearing shoes. So we'd seen a machogas in a previous daf, so whether or not you wear shoes on certain fast days that are decreed on the tzibor. So the Gemara here brings up the same discussion. Um, so the Gemara uh, observes that there are certain fasts, at least according to some opinions, where we don't wear shoes. So the Gemara wants to know, somebody who would accept it upon himself to fast, is he allowed to wear shoes or not? Which fast did he mean? Did he mean a shoe-wearing fast or a non-shoe-wearing fast? So the Gemara says, well, we're not sure, and therefore he's not going to be allowed to wear shoes. If he wants to be able to wear shoes, he better specify. He better say that I accept upon myself tomorrow to fast a tainas yachad, an individual fast. An individual fast, you're allowed to wear shoes. 
Uh, now the Gemara discusses the wearing of shoes in more length. The Gemara says that some of the Rabbanon said of Sheshus, I saw Talmud Chachamim wearing shoes and going into the fasting house, the place where they went when they fasted. So Rav Shesha, as he held that you can't wear shoes on a fast day, and any fast day, not um, any of these fast days that are decreed because of the rain, and he said, well, if they're wearing shoes, they may as well eat. The Gemara notes that Abayin Rava and um, Marimar and Marzutra and uh, the Rabbanon the Bayer of Ashi, they all held like the opinion which we've seen earlier, that you are allowed to wear shoes. That's the opinion of Shmuel that's brought down. But the Gemara says that Abaya and Rava did something as a sign that they were limiting their shoe pleasure, that they wore shoes without soles. It had a leather top, but it didn't have soles. Now, Marimar and Marzutra, they put the shoes on the wrong feet. They switched the left and right feet. The Rabban and the Bay Rav Ashi, though, they wore shoes as normal. Okay. Now the Gemara goes further and discusses what happens if you accept upon yourself to fast, and then it turns out that you can't fast. So Rabbi Yehuda says, in the name of Rav, you could postpone your fast. means what the Gemara calls that you borrow. You borrow a day of eating. You say, okay, I, I accepted the fast today, but I'm not going to. Instead, I'm going to borrow one of my future eating days, use it here, and I'll pay it back a different day. I'll fast on a different day. Now, the Gemara has two versions as to whether Shmuel agreed with this or not. The Mara's first version is that Shmuel said, why does he have to pay it back? doesn't have to pay it back. It's not a neder. He didn't vow to fast. He pro- he said he wants, he said he intends to fast. If it turns out that he can't fast, that's fine. He doesn't have to pay it back. According to the second version, Shmuel said, yeah, it's obvious. Of course you have to pay it back. It's just like a neder, and just like a neder has to be fulfilled, this has to be fulfilled uh, as well. Now the Gemara brings an incident related, and where it says the Rav Shua Breder of Edi went to the house of Rav Asi, and they made for him a very delicious uh, third calf. And they wanted him to eat some, but he said, I'm fasting. So he said, okay, so then borrow from future. Delay your fast, pay it back a different time. Don't you hold it out luckily, you're allowed to borrow a future eating day and pay back your fast a different time. So he said, no, I don't want to. The reason I'm fasting is because they had a dream, had a very disturbing dream. And the best way to deal with that is by fasting. Like Rav, Chama Bar in the name of Rav, uh, fast is as good for a dream as fire is good for burning flax. But that's only if you fast that day, the day that you wake up from that dream. So therefore, I have to fast today. And where our notes are, Rav says, you even let to fast on Shabbos in a circumstance like that, but then you have to fast in payment for the fact that you fast on Shabbos, you have to fast another day afterwards. Okay, now we get to the next Mishnah. Mishnah discusses further procedures as to what happens if the rain has not come. We've already discussed the three fasts, Monday, Thursday, Monday of the Talmud HaChachamim, the first set of three fasts of the Tzibur, where you were allowed to do the other Inuyim besides for eating and drinking, and you were allowed to work, and you were allowed to eat until the morning. And I think more notes, the next level, and that's if the rain still had not arrived after those, so we decree three more fasts. These are stricter. You're not allowed to eat and drink already from nightfall. You're not allowed to do malach on the entire fast day. And you can't do the other inuyim. You can't wash, you can't anoint, you can't wear shoes, and you cannot engage in marital relations. Are notes that they would actually lock the bathhouses um, because you weren't allowed to wash. Now, if these three fasts also passed and were not answered, then the Beis Din decreed seven fasts. So we have seven, three, and three. A total of 13 fasts is the max you would ever decree on the Tzibor because of rain. And these have the same halachos, except that they also had special uh, screaming. Tomorrow we'll discuss what the screaming means, shofar or tefillah. Now, you um, also locked the stores so they couldn't go shopping. The mission says that was only on Monday. Thursday, you had to leave the stores open so people could buy food for Shabbos. And even on Monday, towards the evening, you opened the stores so people could buy food to break the fast. He also decreased um, the... Uh, now, if these seven fasts went by and there was still no rain, so there were no more fasts on the Tibor, but for the rest of the time until the rain came, people decreased their joyful activities. They didn't really shop. They didn't engage in business transactions that bring joy. They didn't build new structures that bring joy, and they didn't plant new investments that bring joy. They didn't get engaged. They didn't get married, and they didn't greet each other with Shalom Aleichem. They walked around like people who were being scolded, scolded by a Baruch Hu by not sending them the 
rain. Now, the individuals, the Talmud Chachamim, they continued fasting every Monday, Thursday, until either the rain came or Nisan, or the first month of spring, was over. Once that ended, then they stopped because we don't want rain anymore. Rain after that time is a simon klola. It's a bad sign. Okay, the Gemara now begins. The Gemara analyzes the halachos of these stricter fast. The Gemara says they understand the five inuyim. You don't want them to uh, wash, anoint, use, uh, and do uh, marital relations. That causes pain. But the Gemara says, why can't they go to work? Work is not fun. They should be allowed to go to work. So the Gemara says, no, we learned that you don't work during a fast day from a special pasuk. The pasuk says, kitchu tzayim. Sanctify a fast day, kira atzara, and kola natsara, is was a kanim, katsaras. And uh, bring the uh, elders together. So the Gemara says, so it's like atzaras. Atzaras refers to either shvuas or shmini atzaras. Just like on shvuas sh- and sh- shmini atzaras is isr malacha, you're not allowed to work. On these fast days also, there's isr malacha, you're not allowed to work. So the Gemara says, if that's true, then the isr malacha should start from the evening before. Why does it only start? From the morning, on Atzeres, the Yisrael starts from the evening before. So Gemara says no, because it also says Isu is a Canaan. Gather the elders. It's like a meeting of the elders, just like the meeting of the elders is during the day. The Yisrael is only during the day. So Gemara says, oh, if that's true, so maybe someone from the afternoon. The meeting of the elders is usually only from the afternoon that it begins. So the Gemara says no. We have a brisa. We have a statement of Huna. That is, that says that they would gather in the shul in the morning of the fast days, and therefore there was no work that happened in any of these fast days. They were already meeting in the shul to get together to begin the procedure for uh, these special fast days. It says the Gemara, what was the procedure? So by it describes the day was divided into halves and quarters. The first half, they would discuss their activities and what is happening in the town, and if there was anything that they could improve. The second half of the day from after Chatzos was divided into two quarters. The first quarter they would lane Vayichal and read the Haftorah of Dirshah Hashem Behim And the last quarter of the day they would do Tefillah. Um, the Gemara says that's based on the Pasuk Vayikum al Amda Vayikar Ubisifer Torah Hashem Elokeim Revius Hayom. Revius Misvad Meshachem Lashem Elokeim. So you see that they divide it into quarters, a quarter of the day they lained, and a quarter they did tefillah. He says, how do you know that that was the order? Maybe the tefillah was in the beginning of the day. He says, no, that can't be. Tefillah is always going to be at the end of the day on a fast day. There are quotes a Pasuk in Ezra, where Ezra decreed a fast day, where it says that, and he says, Ve'elai, also call Charid Bedivri Elokei Yisrael. He gathered to me all those who fear the word of the God of Israel. Um, and then it says, "Even evening, minchas erev. That was when the tefillah began, as described in the pasuk here." Drive the Daf is a project of the Grand Woodland School and is presented by Rabbi Yitzchak Landa. Find us on YouTube or subscribe to daily emails by emailing drivethedaf at gmail.com.